When will home prices stop bottoming? Here are some clues to find out. That's article one that we're gonna be checking out on this reaction video. The next one will be steep prices drop will bring sanity back to housing market in 2023, according to Desjardins. And then we got the last one here, which is some news update, stimulation for the market. Ottawa's new tax-free first home savings account is coming and here's what you need to know. Now, this is a little bit more of a shorter, condensed version of the reaction videos because we are coming to the dog days of summer. It's a little bit slower, which is wonderful. Everyone enjoys the last two weeks of what's happening before, you know, potentially an uptick. Maybe some market shifts are coming. And I'll probably post a video maybe next week about where I think September is heading and just a recap of all the things I've been talking about. But if you're kind of looking to uh, make a move or not sure if you should be buying or should be selling right now and you're just a little bit confused with all these headlines that's going on, you can book a strategy call to kind of just chat about what you're trying to do to see if that makes sense. Uh, you can do so by booking a call using the link right here. It's www.chatwithzen.com. Simply click on the date and a time that works best for you and then when you see the prop fill in your name email mobile phone number and the question you have for me and then we'll chat then good day toronto welcome to another episode of prime properties tv my name is zen i own and run a remax in the greater toronto area and top of making all this awesome real estate content on youtube for you but the first article we are going to be reviewing in this video is this right here when will home prices or sorry when will Canadian home prices bottom and here are some clues um, this was published by Robert McAllister which I think he's a really good follow in regards to mortgage mortgages here so here's a couple of things that they're going to highlight and I'll kind of give you my feedback and kind of reaction to it right um, the first one is uh, what he says is buy time if you're a prospective home buyer which a lot of people right now are because most people who are looking for are either end users or investors looking to scoop up like steal of a deal uh, you'll want to know when it's safe to get back in the water and these are kind of the clues right so this is the first thing I'm going to say. Nobody's a fortune teller. Neither is he. He's making a declaration. Nobody knows because no matter how smart someone says they are or how many predictions are out there, you got to do your own due, uh, res do you, you gotta do your own due diligence because there's this thing that I believe in called like a mosaic theory, which is like you got to take pieces from everywhere and all those pieces keep changing. So your input keeps changing, which means your output should change as well. So even for someone like me who's following the market all the time, when new stuff comes in, things will change. So like an example is like, you know, inflation as a joke came in for US, it's down, it's at like eight and a half percent. So people are celebrating now from last week because, you know, they think it's over because it's finally trending down, right? But 8.5%, I think back in March or April, people are freaking out, right? There's like a really good meme you'll post over here. So again, do your own due diligence and have some critical thinking like I've been saying for the last like months, right? To understand what's going on. So don't take anyone's kind of, uh, predictions for Bayman, right? So right here it says prices in your region and they're saying that you can't rely on average price which is actually a really really bad uh, number especially on the national level because like every single province is different. Like even if I give you the GTA prices uh, from Trep, they're not the same right because you can go to like say Durham region or Peel region or Trep doesn't even cover like Hamilton and the West End like a RAB region right. So you need to understand and work with someone who's local and even within pockets, each pockets and communities operates in a totally different manner, right? Like you could be in Toronto, call it in the, you know, EO8 area, um, but then depending on what type of asset, whether you're like north or south of Dundas Street, it's a totally different neighborhood and it's a totally different price, right? So know your exact area and work with a professional locally. Uh, the other thing is uh, you really don't want to be using average prices right now as much. Um, only because the sales volume is down about like 50%. So meaning that the sample size, especially when you go and narrow it down to like a micro market, like a community, it's going to be really bad. You're going to be working like four or five sales, right? So like the only kind of uh, micro segment I would trust or anything with over like a hundred sales, which generally isn't that micro in, uh, you know, month where there's like 4,000 or 4,900 sales. So again, check that out. Um, you could use medium price, which is a little bit better, which is like the middle price right now. But um, I would avoid the HPI because the HPI is lagging and I never know what they take in or put out and all that stuff. So yeah, save that for another day. Uh, then you got the number of home sales, which is plummeting and people are pulling their listings, which I totally agree with. And you want to kind of see where things are starting to flatten out. Now, I made a market watch video last week, which actually things are flattening out right now. But I wouldn't say this is one of the clues, like I was saying with the mosaic theory. It's more about having a lot of input. So this is just one input of like maybe the nine or 10 I'm following. And this is like, you know, a check mark, a positive sign, but the other nine aren't quite there yet, especially with the September 7th rate hike that's coming and how much inventory we're gonna get the first day after Labor Day long weekend. That's what it is, yeah. <laughs> 
Um, then you got to check on inventories. So again, um, I agree with them since ideally you want to see inventory grow slowly in a meaningful way, which I would look at this as you don't want a huge surge of listings, right? This is what I was saying uh, a little bit earlier. If you see a huge surge of listings and the buyers aren't uh, coming back, at the rate that the listings are coming up, right? And generally listings come up before buyers, then that means we're gonna go into a seller's market and there's too much stuff to buy, right? Because right now inventory is low, no one's selling, people are pulling their listings and putting up for rent instead. But we'll have to see what that dynamic is come September. Uh, the next one, this one's really important, unemployment. So most people don't have to sell, super important. So long as they have a job and can make their payments, which means that people, like I was saying a long time ago, everyone wants to make their monthly payment and the missing mortgage is the last thing they're gonna wanna do. And that's why you wanna look at credit card defaults because that's the first thing they're gonna default on or get some cash advance to pay the mortgages, right? So housing capitulation, again, finance, technical term, which is just basically for like blowing up and crashing, generally requires a surge in job losses. And currently Canada has a record low unemployment rate of 5%, give or take. So we need to see unemployment come down because even if you have a decent sized mortgage you can carry, maybe it's like a fair and it's below market. If you lose your job and we go into a recession, then you can't pay it. Then we may have a surge of listings. So that's why a lot of these people who are saying, hey, look, I'm hoping a recession will come because rates will come down. They're way too laser focused on the macro about the interest rate right now. And you have to understand that come a recession and people are losing jobs, you're going to have a whole different set of problems, right? Not just the interest rate. And then uh, again, you can say you can monitor their stats can. Um, I look at this data all the time every single week, but right now it's still very strong. It's kind of just cresting. And you can see that um, I think it was uh, the tech industry and some other real estate related stuff is kind of laying people off. Like uh, I think Shopify laid off 10% of their employees, right? So remember, uh, employment data, like I was saying over here, it takes months for it to kind of show up, right? So that's why you want to look for like boots on the ground data, anecdotal stuff first. And then usually I <clears throat> ask around with people I trust to see what's going on and then look at the macro. Because when you look at the macro down to the micro, you're too slow. But when you look at the micro up to the macro and you see trends that go, oh, this makes sense. Oh, the trend is here with other people I know that are good in the industry. Oh, there's a little bit of macro trend. Then that's when we know we're on the ups, uptrend. And having that information arbitrage from here to here where most people don't because they're not working with someone who knows what they're doing right now all the time or basically they're just like you know a little bit slow that's where money is made in that information arbitrage that information asymmetry that people don't get right so that's kind of how i operate um then you got uh, a turn of rates this was super important everyone's following this one so uh you know you don't need any more information but i'll explain some of the things so you want a signal from bank of canada that's done uh, hiking rates, which could happen sometime, I don't know, October, November, no one knows, right? Just honestly, I've been saying it's going to be dependent on inflation. Then you got a drop in Canada's continued five-year bond. So again, it's not to get technical. This is what uh, dictates the five-year fixed market. So I pulled up here for you. This is the one month, or sorry, not one, one month, one day. Let me go to one, one trend. So you can basically see here that at the peak, we're at like 3%. We went down to about 2.6 and now we're hovering around 2.8. So it would come down, I think, from the peak 100 basis points around here. So you want to see this uh, come down a little bit more. Um, right now, I think he has it in his article over here. Yeah. So like the five-year bonds haven't moved as much. I think some of the smaller banks have dropped it. So when the banks kind of get, I think, earnings like this week or next week, maybe something like this week, if their earnings aren't that great, they're going to have to stimulate the market, you know, provide more mortgages, originate more mortgages, underwrite more mortgages, then they may want to get more competitive on the five-year fix. And that's when the five-year fix may come down. And if the September rate hike is coming, there's going to be at the weird point where like the fix actually may make sense to lock in um, because it's going to be uh, lower than the variable because the variable is on the way up and the fix is kind of on the way down if the five-year bond market is coming down. Um, Complicated situation, but just look out for it. I'll probably make a video when that kind of like cross happens, right? Because we haven't seen the fixed cheaper than the variable for a while. Um, then you got here, the bond market is pricing in rate cuts in the next 12 to 18 months. Yes, which is true, uh, but that's a sign of recession. So again, I was saying earlier, watch out for the employment number. And then the final point right here is, I speak with lots of real estate investors and most are just waiting to snap up bargains, especially given the soaring rents and immigration levels. So I totally agree with that. This is a very macro trend. I have a lot of clients who are sitting on some cash from some refinances. I've been telling them to hold off until we see the uptick right now. So I can personally attest to that anecdotally as well and people on our team. So that's kind of why I'm making a video, I think, this week about some pre-con deals that we did and are happening right now for anyone who's kind of interested in that kind of stuff. But there are people who are waiting. But 
the, even the investors kind of need to know when the bottom is. And that's why I'm monitoring that. And that's why right now as an end user who's going to live in there, it's actually a good opportunity right now because like the investors are still kind of chilling and waiting. And the only people you're competing with are other homeowners who may not be looking to buy right now, right? Again, this is not a plug for you to buy something right now, but you just got to look at your own life circumstance to see whether you want or need a house, right? And if it makes sense to do it right now relative to like the purchase price and the rates versus like before or what you think in the future is and whether you go fix or variable, right? So it's a very long conversation, hard to say. If you want to work with us, link in the screen here. Give me a call, we'll chat, okay? And then they said right here that it's okay as long as you have a long-term horizon. It may take two to five years for you to correct, right? So that's why when it comes to real estate, you want a super long-term horizon, generally five to 10 years. It's just the market's been ballistic in the last two years. So people kind of lose sight of what's happening. They think it's a quick buck. And like I've always said in real estate for like, God knows, I think like seven or eight years, it's a get rich slow scheme, <laughs> not quick. <laughs> if it's quick, we have a problem. Uh, then we got the other thing is rates this week, which I was saying a little bit earlier, the five-year bond rate. Um, see some, they're saying some of the banks have come down about 40 basis points from the peak. And that's kind of it. So like those are the uh, points that I would obviously say are clues of when the price is coming down. So the other things I'll look at, it, obviously he mentioned, but more specifically would be like months of inventory, the way and how real estate's being traded. The minute we start seeing um, days on market shrink and properties not sitting for a long time and people are actually buying them, then we know that uh, the buyer demand is greater than the amount of supply we hit relative to the interest rate, right? Then the other thing is you got to look at inflation and how it affects employment and the rates because inflation continues staying high. There's a mandate for the central banks to increase um, the interest rate, right, to fight inflation, which means the variable goes up. But if they're pricing in a recession, then the bond rate may come down. That's kind of where you know, that cross may happen. Again, these are a lot of clues that if you don't understand or can't digest, it's OK. You can just book a call with me using the link right here to kind of understand how some of this stuff works. Now, if you found any of this content enjoyable, interesting, I'm pretty sure someone else would. So make sure you help us spread the knowledge by smashing the like button and helping us get to 10K. I'm pretty sure we're really close. And while you're at it, just you know, click the subscribe button. Like I was saying, it'll help a lot. Now, the next article we got here is steep prices drop will bring sanity back to housing market in 2023, Desjardins. <sighs> Another economist uh, prediction of it coming down. So this is what I'll read for you. Desjardins is forecasting the average home price in Canada, not GTA, Canada, will decline by another 25% by the end of next year from the peak in February this year. So I think they said that they're rearranging it. I'm not going to go too much detail. Like I think RBC came out a week or two ago. Everybody's coming out with it. And this is just getting kind of boring, repetitive, and yeah, just, yeah, you don't really want to talk about it anymore. So I'll keep it short. Like if they're coming down from 25% from the peak in GTA, we're already down like 20%. So 5% down for the next like year and a half. Yeah, year and a half. It's not that bad, whatever, right? If you want to read the full report, put a link in the description below. This is it, relatively kind of, you know, subdued. Same thing, a little chart that looks like RBC, as you can see right here, you know, if this is the sales, it's coming down. This is the, uh, sorry, sales is green, it's coming down. The price is coming down, blah, 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 whatever, okay. Next, <laughs> all right, next article. Ottawa's new tax-free home savings account is coming and here's what you need to know. So this was, um, I think, talked about during the last federal election, I think they're promising it. Anyways, it's the idea that uh, it's a new account, basically similar, it works in the RRSP manner. You can put money into it, you don't get taxed on that and you can withdraw it to buy your first home, right? So it's up to $40,000. I think you can put in about $8,000 annually for a lifetime contribution. Cool. If you're in GTA or Vancouver, it's not going to make a dent. Uh, if you're in the other areas and prices I've got them, I think this will totally help. Um, but that's really kind of it. Like, I don't think it's going to change the market anymore. This is just, you know, government fiscal uh, government policy trying to help and buy votes. At the end of the day, there's so many ways to look at it. Like, I think last time I talked about like months and months ago is like, you know, is this money for people buying their first home being subsidized by people actually pay taxes because these people are paying, uh, not paying taxes? Are they trying to target the millennial cohort who is the biggest buyer right now for the first homes because, you know, that's a large cohort for voting? There's so many ways to get political about it, but I'm just going to leave it at, at this. You're not going to change the market with this. Like, talk to me when the stress test changes. Then it'll make a big difference. 
Anyways, hope you found this content useful. If you are trying to look for like some help in terms of how to navigate this market, whether you're buying, selling, trying to find a deal, not sure you should sell, maybe you're just confused about what's going on, you can book a call with me using the link right here. It's www.chatwithzen.com. Until next time, your move, your future. See ya. Now that you're done watching this one, how about this one? Oh, you know what? This one's good too. Ooh, this one's really good. You know what? Just watch the most.